We feel that we've got some very, very important information that we want to share with, with all of you um, because you, you have some important choices to make and you need to have the information to make those choices um, intelligently and with the best resources that, that, that you can have at your fingertips. And so again, welcome. I want to thank the district. I want to thank all of the counseling department that's, that's here to assist and help to set it up, in particular Ms. Glenda McClendon who is the coordinator for guidance and counseling with the McAllen Independent School District. And as assisting with the presentation tonight, we have um, Jody Pena, who is the lead counselor at McAllen High School. We also have Ms. Jeannie Dopp, who is the career and, and technical education counselor at Memorial High School. We have one of their teachers from Achieve Early College High School, Beatrice Gonzalez, and she'll talk a little bit about Achieve. And then finally, we have um, Marissa Serrabando, who is the coordinator for the IB program right here at Lamar Academy. And so, you know, we're going to start um, before we, we even get into the PowerPoint and just say we took some time this year to put together a brochure that really concisely outlines all of the different attributes of these programs. And we wanted to give you something that was side by side because in the past what we had is a whole lot of different brochures and that gets a little bit cumbersome in trying to sort it out. But what we did here is we give a description and this should give enough information to answer a lot of your questions. But if it doesn't, you'll notice down at the bottom we have some contact people and numbers, principals and counselors that if we don't answer your questions today, either through the presentation or the Q&A at the end, you have a resource here that you can go and you can call and you can ask. And there will be subsequent follow-up meetings for these different programs and you'll have an opportunity to apply. But, you know, if, if you do have that nagging question after you leave and say, geez, I wish I would have asked this, there you have a good resource. It also has a comparison down at the bottom, you know, which of these programs you can earn college hours, which you can get licensures which potentially can save you some tuition money in advance for, for your students before they go, which ones get recognition, you know, which are going to really ensure that, that your children are going to be career and college ready by the time that they graduate. You know, and this is a process that over a few years you're going to be able to build that coursework and build that direction for your child where they're going to be able to go into the direction that they are um, aspire, you know, where, where they have their passion. And that's most important in the conversation. You know, we need to look at what are those areas that, that really get us excited and that we want to think about doing for a career. You know, the way that things are changing so quickly right now, though, people change careers more often than they did, than they did in the past. And so, you know, the, the, the flexibility there is, is still a possibility for your child. You know, you can say, hey, I, I really would like to go into one of these programs, but after a semester or after a year, they say, no, this isn't right for me. Well, you know, we have students that, that change. And they change even in college majors. And that's okay. But, you know, they have an opportunity to accrue, in some cases, up to 60 college hours before they even progress. And so we need to think about what are your aspirations, what are your goals, and then try to match them up with the possibilities that we have. We know that you have lots of other choices out there, that there are other districts that you can look at, that there's charter schools that are coming down the line, but we are very, very proud of the success that we've had with many of our programs and the way that we've expanded and it's going to continue to change as, as, as we go through. You know, I, I hate to date myself, but uh, I graduated high school somewhere in the 70s. I won't say exactly when. And back then, we had the um, CP and regular. And that was it. And if you look at the, at the possibilities that we have now, I mean, there was no opportunity for getting any kind of college credit back then. And it's only been more recently. And it's going to continue to expand. You know, we, we look at the online courses and what's happening at the colleges, and that's, that's changing. And it's changing exponentially even in the public schools. 
you know, states like Florida, it's really taking off and we're gonna see more and more of it in our own state. But for right now, as you're moving into the beginning stages of high school, these are some of the, the basic and essential things that, that you need to know. You know, first of all, in the choices that we offer, we still have some constraints. It's required by law for all of our students to have at least 26 credits to complete the graduation requirements. And whether they're in IB, whether they're taking AP at the traditional high school, whether they go to early college, whether they're in one of the academies, it doesn't matter. They still have to have that crosswalk of 26 credits for high school in order to be able to graduate. Now, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a traditional high school, they have an eight period day. So over the course of four years, that's 32 potential credits. And consequently, most of our graduates finish in you know, exceeding the 26 credits. And that's a good thing because you know, with the electives that they have built in and then with that extra flexibility, if they wanna stay in, in band for four years or an ROTC or they've got a you know, particular interest in a career path with technology, they have that flexibility with, with some additional periods that they can do that. And we encourage them to do that. Or they can work you know, partially doing some concurrent enrollment or do some, some more dual credit where they can carry over. So that's the basic though, is, is the 26 credits to complete graduation requirements for the state. We also have within the state what we call the four by four. And for all students in the recommended and the distinguished achievement plan, they have to take four Carnegie credits, which is a full year of English, math, science, and social studies. You know, the last year of social studies, it's, um, it's going to be um, government and economics, you know, one of each per semester, and that counts as a social studies. But it is a four by four that they're all required to finish with. Other requirements that they have to have to graduate they have to have one credit of PE, you know, and there's, there's different athletics um, that can, you know, meet that requirement. Actually, even marching band is, 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 is a way that they can meet that, that PE requirement. Technology applications, which I just realized is, is a local credit. And then principles of technology information and high school to, um, tech to college transition is an additional credit that they need to have. Other requirements, they have to have speech, fine arts. Within the fine arts, they can have you know, band, orchestra, drama, choir, art. Um, there's, there's lots of choices that they have there. Languages other than English. With this, it's, it's real important to know because if you graduate on the recommended plan, you need to have two full years of a foreign language. But if you want to go with the distinguished achievement, one of the requirements is that you have to have that additional year. Now, if you do have the credit in eighth grade, that will count, and a lot of the students come in with that, with that credit in eighth grade, and then they would only need the two years in, in the high school. Electives. The distinguished achievement, because there, there is the additional requirement for language, would only have one and a half credits left over for electives. But you do have that margin of six credits that I talked about before with the eight period day, which helps out. And then two and a half credits for electives with the recommended plan. Now, we've got some, something that started last year with the state called STAR, the State Assessment of Academic Readiness. And this monster of STAR incorporates what we call end of course exams. And this is really, really important that, that we know because at this point, and I know the legislature, there have been articles about making some adjustments and some changes, but we don't know what they're gonna do. The law right now says that they have to pass 12 exams in order to graduate. And within each of the four core areas, they have to have a cumulative score that meets a certain threshold in order to meet the graduation requirement. And so with that, you know, the counselors have, have programs where they're gonna track that and they can talk to you and you'll get reports back from the state. But the good thing is that 
they do have multiple opportunities to take those tests. I mean, of course, it's best that if we can pass it the first time around, but if they, if they don't meet the level of score that they need, they can take it multiple times. In order to meet the distinguished achievement measure, they have to have an advanced score, which is kind of like comparable to what they used to have as commended on the tax. They have to have a higher score on the Algebra 2 and on the English 3 in order to get that distinguished achievement measure. And then again, as I said, a cumulative score in each of the subject area for ELA math, social studies, and science. So we'll see where we, we go with that, but right now that's, that's quite, um, quite a lot that they have on their plate to be able. And again, this is applicable to all of the programs. They still have to pass the EOC, whether they're at early college or IB or traditional high school. Okay, career and technology education. We're very proud of our CTE program. You know, this is, this is something that um, for many of our students is an avenue to very gainful employment. I don't know about you, but uh, when the plumber comes into, into my house or the air conditioning repairman, you know, I, they're, they're doing as well as I am in many cases. And uh, there are many different career clusters. As a matter of fact, there's 95 course options and 15 different career clusters for training that they can have. There's also opportunities for dual enrollment and college credit. They do some job shadowing. They have an opportunity for various licensures. And um, with, with that, you know, they get some hands-on practice working with, with some business and industry and, and training, which is gonna help prepare them. And we've had many of our students that have gone through that program and have been very successful in the workforce. For some, for some of our students, that's a, that's a very viable opportunity. Okay, the other high school recognitions that we talked about, the Distinguished Achievement Plan, the Texas Scholars, and the Texas Tech Prep Scholars. You know, if we complete all of the, the, the high school requirements for the recommended plan, they're gonna be eligible for the Texas Scholars, and then with the Tech Prep, they're gonna to have to take some additional technology courses in order to get that. But that's an additional recognition that they would be able to get a graduation. And then we said with the Distinguished Achievement, there's a, a series of, um, of goals that they're gonna to have to reach, some with test scores and, and some with academic work. Um, but as far as the coursework, is really not that much difference from the, the DAP to the recommended. So that's something that you need to look at because that's another distinction that they'll get at graduation. Okay, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to our lead counselor from Mac High, Ms. Jody Pena, who's going to talk to you about advanced placement. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Jody Pena, and I am the lead counselor uh, at Mac High, and I welcome you here tonight, and I thank you for coming, and I hope we have some bulldogs coming in uh, this next year. I'm going to talk to you just briefly about AP, um, AP courses and what they mean on our campus. Basically, what we, do, what we do in the freshman and sophomore years, we prepare students to take the AP level courses. So you'll see a pre-AP courses um, that prepare students for the college level courses. And those college level courses are your AP advanced placement courses. What we do is the teachers are trained, they go to trainings all over the state or wherever they're, they're being held, and the teachers are brought back and are able to give our students the instruction that is required in order to be able to prepare them for the AP courses. Um, Pre-AP courses, like, like I said, begin in 9th and 10th. Those students take usually your core courses of math, English, science, social studies. So we start with English 1 pre-AP, English 2 pre-AP, Algebra 1 pre-AP, Geometry pre-AP, um, World Geography pre-AP, World History pre-AP. World History is a sophomore level course and that's the only one that we actually offer at an AP level. And then of course we have um, your Science, Biology pre-AP and um, Chemistry pre-AP. Now AP courses, as I said, are college level. They help students to acquire the skills and habits needed to be successful in college and they are rigorous and challenging. We ask the students to be very careful when choosing this. Make sure that it's something that they know they're gonna work hard at. They don't necessarily need to be super gifted in that particular area. Maybe I don't like biology, 
but I'm going to do it and I'm going to work hard to get the grade that I get. And many students will choose the pre-AP and AP routes because they know that at the end when they get their rankings in the sophomore year and junior year and senior year that they do get additional weights added to their rankings in order to make their GPAs higher and of course more marketable for a college of their choice, especially those highly selective colleges. But we do caution parents a little bit in saying, you know what, we want you to do that. We want you to do the rigorous coursework, but you've got to be disciplined enough to be able to carry it through. Because we are pretty rigid about these things. We ask, you know what, you're going to be ready to do it, then we're going to stick it out till the end. And as long as you're passing, we're thrilled. Because we're saying, you know what, no matter what, you're still going to get those additional points at the end. It doesn't change the grade necessarily. But when a college or university sees the transcript, they're going to see the, the markers of a Q for pre-AP, or they're going to see the marker of an A next to that grade. So if they see an 80 grade, but it says a Q on there, they're going to know, you know what, that was a high level course. They took an honors course. They took a pre-AP course. And so it does hold some weight in that. Um, I, I want to assure you that if your child is taking the AP, it's going to be listed, in fact, in the junior and senior year, will be listed as AP language for English, and it won't just be listed as English 3, okay? So just so you know, and colleges and universities, especially those highly selective college universities, will look at your transcript when they're trying to make the determination on whether to accept you or not. Students enrolled in AP courses must take the AP exams maintained by College Board. We require every student to take the AP exam. AP exams are offered in May, usually the first two or three weeks of May. Um, because we require it, we do not require the student to pay for the exams. So we, as long as they're sitting in a class that's AP, we pay for that. That does not mean that we won't allow a student not to take an AP exam that they're not sitting in a class for, and we do have some students do that with AP Spanish language or AP Spanish literature, but w the student will then have to put forth the, the monies to be able to do that. But it is offered to the students. We also even have some students that will take the AP, say, English language one year, their junior year, and say, you know what, I'm going to study up for it and I want to take it again the following year, and then we do that. And we're lucky that the state um, provides us grants to be able to cover the costs, subsidize the costs for some of these, um, for some of these APs. Students who earn a score of 3, 4, or 5 may receive college credit. What we consider a passing score in APs, once you take that, is uh, a 3, 4, or 5. And what each college and university will do is they'll say, okay, you scored a 3, and they have their own, um, their own way of, of evaluating that three, four, five to determine which level of English course they're going to give you credit for. And each college has their own. So you'll find that some may offer, may give a student for having an English five, a five exam on English language, they may give them 1301, 1302 English. Or some may just give them the 1301. Just all depends on each college or university. But there is the opportunity to receive those college credits. Students enrolled in AP courses have exam fees currently paid through combination of state waivers and district funds. Now, an AP student also, if they pass AP exams, can also be recognized as AP scholars, AP scholars of honors, AP scholars of distinction, AP, AP state scholar, and national AP scholar. And then an AP graduate have received admittance into honors and specialized programs as freshmen in English, and as freshmen in college. The student will, will take this, these honors and be able to put them on a resume when they're finally, um, on all those uh, achievements, when they're filling out their applications for college, they'll be able to list these as achievements, and these are not looked on lightly. They are taken very seriously. These are very high honors. In fact, I believe an AP scholar has to score a three, four, or five on five exams, and we do have AP scholars in our district, guys, so I just really wanna promote that as much as possible. Mandatory meetings are required for students to be registered in pre-AP or AP uh, courses. Now that is dependent on the school where your student will, will end up going, whether Memorial Row, uh, IB or, or Lamar, um, or Matt High, of course, how can I forget that? But we do want to tell you that there, will be, there may be meetings that you will be called to come to to be able to give you more in-depth inf information about the different, um, say, social studies uh, area and to be able to give you what is exact what is the exact expectation for your child in those classes? Now, I want to give you these websites. It's uh, www.collegeboard.com and then apcentral.collegeboard.com. 
And I, I want to tell you one more thing that our district does that I don't think we have listed in this presentation at all, which I think is super beneficial to your child, is that we offer the PSAT test, which is the pre-SAT, um, which is a college entrance exam, the SAT. And we give our PSAT exams to all our freshmen and all our sophomores. As long as they're in attendance, they're going to take a PSAT exam when we give it. And that's usually the second Wednesday of October. So feel assured that your child will get that benefit. And that's part of our college readiness um, uh, you know, campaign. You, you've got to be ready. And everybody knows and statistics show us that the more you take these practice SATs or ACT exams and the more you take them, the better prepared you are for taking the exams. Um, of course, knowledge is part of it, but the other part is strategically knowing how to take the exams. And the more familiar you are with the exams, the better. And the reason I mention this right now in my presentation is because when we're done and the school gets the scores for PSAT, naturally we hand it to the students. We, we go over the My College Quick Start and we do all this stuff. But importantly for me and for our staff and for the counselors is that they give us, from there, we get an AP Potential listing. And what that AP Potential says is, oh, it looks like John Doe uh, received a really high score in this particular area. He has the potential to take the AP in chemistry because we do have chemistry at AP levels and biology at AP levels. You know, we have higher level sciences. And so it tells us that. And, and what we'll do then is we'll talk to the student and then to the parent to determine if that is something you want to do. It says he's got the potential, but does he have the drive? Does he want to do it? Or do you want to try it? Let's give it, a, let's give it a go. His scores are high enough. And so that will help us also to, de to determine whether your child is eligible or not. So um, it's a really neat tool and um, we've been using it probably for the last couple of years. Um, and we want to use it a lot more than we are right now. And so just want to let you know that, that the PSAT is offered and that is paid for by, again, state waivers and grants that we have and state fund and, and district funds as well. So I just want to assure you that we're doing everything we can to give them the vehicle to be able to be successful in high school in order to be successful in college. And that's what this is really about. This is a training ground for college. And we want to be able to give them the ability to, to get the maximum training they can to, to be successful. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeannie Dopp. I'm the Memorial Career Technology Education Counselor. And I'm really excited to be here tonight because I get to share uh, with you a lot of the opportunities that your kids will have when they enroll in high school. Uh, and that being dual and concurrent enrollment. And bottom line, what this is, is students can earn college credit while in high school, other than AP. So the two things that we, first we need to uh, distinguish are the dual enrollment. A dual enrollment course is a course that is taken in high school uh, for the purposes of gaining high school and college credit simultaneously. The these are, dual enrollment are courses that students take at the high school, but they gain college credit. So they'll gain high school credit and college credit at the same time from the same course. Concurrent enrollment is a little different. Concurrent enrollment is when a student will go to a college or university, for example, UTPA or STC, and gain college credit while in high school. But they are, and they can also gain uh, high school credit for that same course, but they are taking the course at the other institution, not at the high school. So one of the institutions that we have uh, an agreement with is South Texas College. And these uh, South Texas College works with us in teaching uh, and training our te and helping us train our teachers and making sure that they meet the requirements so that they can, our students can gain uh, high school credit and college credit while taking the high school course at our campus. Um, in order for students to be in this, uh, they've got to complete the Apply Texas application. Uh, in order to take a career in technology course or to, uh, to qualify to take the career in technology course for, for college credit, uh, they must score a 2100 or higher on the tax. Uh, for academic courses, uh, the minimum score on the tax would be a 2200 and a 3 on the writing component for the English dual enrollment classes. 
uh, or they may also take the qualifying score, they may also use the qualifying score on the THEA or the Accuplacer for, uh, for the equivalent scores, um, which would be the same as the tax, the 2200 or the 2100. Um, the, chain, the, uh, the requirements for the STAR exam are yet to be announced. They are still working on those requirements because it's such a new uh, exam uh, like Dr. Weber and Ms. Pena were uh, discussing. So uh, we are still waiting for them to make final decisions and give us those exact numbers to qualify. I am currently in four different programs for dual enrollment. Uh, the first one is telecommunications and networking, in which we take computers apart. We in, we know how to. They teach us how to deal with computers, uh, the software, and, and many other things. I made that decision for many reasons. Uh, one of them is, of course, going through college faster by taking these classes in, in since high school. But the main reason uh, I took I took this classes is because I want competitive edge. Things that I'm learning in my classes are really going to help me in my field of study. Um, because, you know, whether it be something like a software in Photoshop, uh, whether it be fixing my own computer when, when it's not working, you know, in the process you only get to know different people and make new friends and have a lot of UTPA um, also offers college credit, like I just mentioned before, but theirs is called concurrent enrollment. In order to qualify to be a concurrent enrollment stu student through UTPA, uh, they must rank in the top 10% of, of their class. They must have a 90 uh, GPA um, based on English, math, the sciences, uh, social studies, and foreign languages or they, must also, they, they can have an SAT combined score of a t uh, 1030 or higher, um, which would be the verbal, the critical reading, and the math, or an ACT composite score of a 22. And in order to apply for this, they would need to see their counselor. Again, these would be courses that were taken at UTPA, but for high school and college credit. Okay. The cursor in there. Hi, my name is Jackie Gorpe. I'm a senior at Nikki Rowe High School, and I took concurrent enrollment. MISD offers many great opportunities and pro programs for students, and I decided to take concurrent enrollment. Uh, concurrent enrollment uh, helps you uh, to take it, it, you take classes at university, and I decided to take this class because I wanted to strive to get a university mm -hmm. college scholarship. I need to pay that pays for my four uh, years of college. Uh, this helped, concurrent enrollment helped me to not only experience the life on campus and meet new friends and experience the class, like real classes at uh, university, uh, it's also going to help me if I get the scholarship. It's going to pay for all my four years, it's going to give me the money that I need. And I really do encourage people to take concurrent enrollment. I know it helped me. And I, I uh, encourage you to ask your counselors about it. and. Just talk about it with them. I think it would help you a lot. Just some additional things that we need to point out uh, in reference to uh, dual enrollment and concurrent enrollment. Students can start this process of gaining college credit through the courses in the 10th grade. Uh, well, at the end of the 10th grade, that's when they start the process. They may take up to six hours a semester and most courses are transferable to, uh, to colleges of their choice uh, in Texas, but they will need to check with those specific schools to see which ones, uh, which courses will transfer. Many times if they don't transfer, let's say you, for example, take an English course uh, and they're an English major, well that, call, that institution may want them to take the English course at, the, at their institution because it is their major but that doesn't mean that they will throw that credit away. They will use it as an elective credit because universities, uh, colleges and universities also require elective credits. This is an, um, an important uh, item for everyone, I'm sure, um, the cost of dual enrollment. STC courses, if they're taken at the high school, are free. 
uh, off-campus UTPA and STC courses are $60 a credit hour. So the, the chart below, uh, below what I just read shows you a comparison of what your savings would be. A regular college student for six hours would pay $400. At STC, at UTPA, for six hours would pay $1,000. Through McAllen ISD High School dual enrollment for six hours at STC, because they're on the high school campus, the students do not pay anything. UTPA, because the student is actually going to UTPA uh, and using their facilities, they have a cost for six hours, the cost would be about uh, $300. So there is a significant savings uh, for, and this would be six hours in each semester. So no financial aid is available for students in high school taking concurrent and dual en enrollment with STC or UTPA. So really what that means is sometimes we have students that come to us and say, well, I wanna take a course at UTPA, uh, I qualify, um, but I still need uh, financial aid, can I apply? Unfortunately, they cannot apply for financial aid until they graduate. Some other points to consider is that these are extremely important because I think sometimes uh, students don't, don't realize how serious, uh, how serious it is when you're taking a dual enrollment course. They are officially a college student. They will get a college ID or whether it's an STC ID or a UTPA ID, they are now officially a college student. So once they have en they've enrolled in college courses, the college grade point average officially begins. Any courses dropped or failed uh, could potentially affect their registration, their financial aid uh, status when after they graduate and when they are eligible to apply. Uh, students also need to investigate requirements, requirements for specific college programs. That's just what I was referring to. If they're, for example, if they're going to major in English, they need to make sure that the college will uh, accept any transfers of, of English courses. Another opportunity to earn a college credit while in high school is a program that STC has in place uh, called the Dual Enrollment Academies. There are three academies that they, uh, they have uh, established with our students and with students from some of the neighboring districts. And they are the DEMSA. The DEMSA is the first that, um, it, well, actually the second at McAllen ISD, but uh, it's the first in this order for this evening. The DEMSA allows students to, at the end of their sophomore year, apply to be in the DEMSA program and the DEMSA stands for the Dual Enrollment Medical Science Academy. When, so students would start at the beginning of their junior year and when they finish the program at the end of their senior year, they would graduate from high school and graduate with an Associate of Science uh, degree in biology. So what the way the program works is they would go to school Monday through Friday from eight to 12, more or less from eight to 12, at the high school campus and then in the afternoon they would attend STC and they would be enrolled in and taking courses uh, to earn the Associate of Science. Um, the, another program that they've started is the Dual Enrollment Engineering Academy. It's the same, uh, the same schedule but the students in this course or in this program rather earn an associate degree of science in engineering, and they earn that by the end of their senior year. So um, just a, without telling you a whole lot of information, just we have a few success stories from this, and one that I would like to share is of some students who were in the DEMSA program and in pharmacology. And when they did, the, and that's a, that's a career and technology program, the pharmacology program, uh, Trained, trained students in the period of one year, which would, is always their senior year, to earn a pharmacy technician license. We have some students that have been enrolled in the pharmacy tech and in the DEMSA. So they graduated from high school with the pharmacy tech certificate uh, license and then uh, an associate's degree of science in biology. And some of them, some of those kids are, are pursuing a, their education in the medical field or in pharmacy. 
So we have some really exciting uh, stories and uh, we're really proud of our kids that are, that are taking advantage of all these opportunities and we would of course like to see uh, the number of students doing this uh, increase. I do the dual enrollment program at STC for engineering, and I chose it so I could get some a lot of college credits out of the way and get my associate's degree out of the way. I take all my base, my core classes. I take them at STC. I selected it because I'm really good at math. I like engineering because it involves a lot of critical thinking and problem solving. And I like to solve different problems. That I Taking the class at STC has helped me. And it's helped me be a more innovative thinker and be more responsible and procrastinate less, get more work done. It will help me achieve my future goals because it'll help my ranking go up. It'll help me get recognized more by bigger colleges. I would tell someone that if you're going to do this program, really take into consideration your application and, and try hard on it. And it'll really help you do better in school. My parents are proud of me for taking these college credits out saving them a lot of money and taking a step forward in my future and looking out for myself. The DIA that the boy was just talking about was the, uh, is the first program uh, that we became a part of uh, through STC. So we have uh, quite a few success stories with that program and now STC has uh, added one more. It is the DEXA, the Dual Enrollment Computer Science Academy. So the students, it's the same setup. The students uh, who, grad who are in this program uh, graduate with an Associate of Science degree in computer science at the end of their senior year. Again, while uh, at the same time graduating from high school. So lots of exciting opportunities for our kids. <coughs> My programs about computer science is programming, and the reason why I chose it is because it's one of the courses I have to take for my degree, which is going to be computer graphic designing. This program is a great opportunity for high school students to start the college at an early age. This program will save you two years of college tuition and allow your students to get a head start in college. I hope to see you guys there. Uh, just some uh, closing points on this. Uh, who can participate? Uh, the students are, are, are recruited and apply at, in the spring of their sophomore year. Uh, they should be enrolled in uh, the Distinguished Achievement Program curriculum, which is the highest graduation plan. Uh, students must have a serious interest in pursuing a career in the health, engineering, or computer science areas and they must also complete an application which uh, involves writing a brief essay and other requirements apply. Uh, sometimes they'll have interviews. Uh, for more information, you can contact uh, the counselors at your campus uh, or Julia Aldrete, uh, with the, who is the coordinator for high school programs at STC. Thank you, Mrs. Dopp. That's, that's a lot of information already, but um, guess what? That's just the traditional high schools, you know? And, and I, can, I can relate uh, the, the students that are able to go to, to STC and earn an associate's degree. Just think of the jump that they have, you know, working towards their, their bachelor's, you know, and, and carrying on, and the jump that they have um, in, in the workforce. It's, it's tremendous. You know, my, my own students that went to, my own children that went to Mac High, two were in college, one is about to graduate. Both of them were able to get, I think, one 18 credits and the other about 20 credits just through the AP and the dual enrollment. You know, saved my wife and I at least a semester of tuition. You know, so there are many different options that, that you can look at and you can talk about. But again, it depends on what your interests are and your career goals. Now, in addition to all of those options that we have in the traditional high school, we have two other programs that we're very, very proud of. That, um, that um, one has been a little bit more recent and, and the other we've had around for 10 years now. And I'm talking about the Achieve Early College High School, which had its first graduation class last spring. 
and we were very proud of the large uh, percentage of students that were able to graduate with an associate's degree, an associate's degree in different areas. And then, of course, our IB program. So here to discuss that in a more detail and to first talk about Achieve Early College High School, we have Beatrice Gonzalez, who is one of their teachers. Good evening. Um, Achieve Early College has is, um, uh, started its fifth class this year. And we are very proud to say that our kids are doing wonderfully. And it really is an amazing program. Um, our motto is begin with the end in mind. And the students are able to earn a high school diploma and an associate's degree at STC. And that is the goal at the end. So here we have our first graduating class uh, with the STC um, graduation and uh, also with the um, uh, the Achieve graduation. So they're able to achieve both at the same time. Um, early College High School is a blend of the traditional high school and the college into one educational program. So at the same time that they're earning high school credit, they're also earning college credit. Um, the classes are very small. We only accept 100 students and that makes it very comfortable for our students because they get to form uh, strong bonds and alliances with their classmates and with the teachers. Uh, we take pride in our students and we help them out as much as possible, but we also push them to be the very best that they can be to represent our school and their class. Um, they have to follow the 26 high school credits as Dr. Weber was talking about, and um, they also get to earn uh, two years of college or six, uh, the two years of college or 60 hours for free. Everything is paid for, their exams are paid for, um, tutorials are offered for to help them pass these exams which will allow them to take STC classes. Um, students at ECHS take a rigorous curriculum of pre-AP um, high school classes that start at the ninth grade. So all their core classes are pre-AP classes. As they get on to the 11th, uh, 11th and 12th grade they start taking more college classes which give them uh, the dual credit for the electives and for the other classes to fulfill the 26 credits. Um, Achieve Early College is located on campus at STC, so the students commute back and forth between STC and um, Achieve Early College. And uh, their freshman and sophomore years, they're taking core classes with all their classmates, but 11th and 12th grade, they get to take them with the rest of the students at STC. So the goal is for them to blend in with the rest of the community at STC so that they are treated just like college students. For additional information, we have waived tuition for a dual enrollment. So all these classes at STC are no cost to the parents. There are transfer credits to other colleges and universities. Um, scholarships uh, for colleges and universities. We also have a uh, kind of a go center where the students apply to scholarships and um, they, we, they have a lot of assistance from the counselor and from myself to apply for scholarships, to do the essays, to do everything that's required in order for them to be successful once they leave our campus. Um, they also have financial aid after high school. Applications for our campus are due in February, and um, there are eligible dual enrollment academies at STC as well. Thank you. Welcome to Lamar Academy. Uh, my name is Marisa Sarabando and I am the coordinator for the International Baccalaureate program here at Lamar Academy. Uh, we do have two IB programs here on our campus. We have the middle years program, which is grades nine and 10, and then we have the diploma program, which is grades 11 and 12. Uh, tonight I am primarily going to talk about the middle years program because that is really where your students are going to be coming into uh, if they choose to apply to the program. But essentially, uh, the diploma program is the program that is going to help them earn college credits through examination, similar to the advanced placement program, where depending on the scores that they earn, uh, they will be able to, to get awarded a different number of uh, college credits to pay, you know, depending on, on where they go and, and how they scored. So I will be happy to answer any questions about the diploma program for anyone who's interested a little bit uh, later as well. A lot of your children are probably already in an IB school. Um, 
since most of our uh, middle schools are either already IB schools or are in the process of becoming IB schools. And so a lot of the terminology is probably not very different. Uh, our two years of the middle years program are the ending of the beginning of their uh, IB preparation in their middle school years. And so we continue to offer a very uh, global curriculum uh, that allows students to learn uh, about subjects, uh, topics that are not typically covered in a traditional high school because we do want them to see uh, and learn about different perspectives, different points of view, and even how their own culture influences their points of view. Uh, a lot of our curriculum is based on encouraging teachers to develop interdisciplinary courses uh, so that students understand uh, the connection between math and art or English and history, and so that they do become um, a more holistic learner and really see how things are really connected. Uh, students are also encouraged to become very critical and reflective thinkers. There's a lot of writing in our coursework, and that is in every subject that we offer. And I think that one of the things, uh, one of the strengths of that requirement is that even though students don't consider themselves necessarily to be very strong writers at this point, they become much better communicators, uh, not only through writing but also through speaking uh, because of some of the requirements that they have. And our program is challenging simply because uh, all of their courses are going to be IB level courses. Uh, they have to take six of those courses with us. And these courses are preparing them for entry into the diploma program. All students in the McAllen School District are able to apply. And actually, we have been recently touring with Achieve Early College High School to the middle schools to speak to students to tell them a little bit more about the program. One of the unique differences about our program is that we are, uh, as far as uh, the other programs are concerned, the only program that requires community service as part of the curriculum. And so not only are we interested in creating a well-rounded academic, but we're also interested in um, helping students to see that part of, uh, part of learning is also in doing and becoming involved. And so actually one of the requirements for the units that they study in the middle years program is also to see that what they learn can be turned into action or can be turned in, you know, that can be a catalyst for action. And so for the both years that they have in the middle years program for us, they are required to, uh, to be a part of five different uh, community service activities. And minimally they should be at least one hour in duration. Also, um, Another unique aspect of the middle years program is that uh, by the time the students are ending their freshman year, they are beginning to learn about the personal project. The personal project is quite an undertaking for someone who's a sophomore. Uh, this is an independent research project uh, where students will write up to a 4,000 word essay to accompany a product that they put together. And I don't say that to scare you, but I, I, I say that because it's really amazing what students are able to accomplish. Uh, this is an opportunity for students to adopt uh, some passion of theirs. Maybe it's writing music. <laughs> writing stories. I wrote a children's book that would help them understand the importance of native plants. And so this is the book. Um, the butterflies that are attracted to the plant, such as the Red Admiral, made a really big impact on the kids that I read it to. I really wanted to um, make this cookbook because I was really interested in learning about all of these um, confections that I've been making my whole life and I didn't really know where they came from. In this story, it's a first person point of view from whatever war they were in, whether it was World War II, Vietnam, or Iraq. Um, this book was started because of my father's strong interest in photography that was then tra transferred to me. Maybe it's cooking knitting, creating art, uh, dancing, whatever it is. 
and to pursue research into this area of interest so that they understand their own process of learning and so that they understand the process of research and how we come to learn. So it is very reflective. It's a very reflective process. It's a very involved process. But over and over, I've heard students often say that they you know, really learned a lot about themselves and they learned a lot about their target uh, subject area through this process. Uh, and so this is something that I think is very, um, very unique in that it's, it's very, I think, unlikely that most sophomores are going to be undertaking this type of work at this level. Uh, we have eight subject groups that are going to be offered as part of the middle years program, which is pretty similar to what a typical high school would cover. However, uh, there is a change which is very exciting for us in the coming year in that typically, for those of you that maybe have siblings or friends who have children that are currently in the middle years program, uh, they've often been required to take eight IB courses with us. A change that's coming up in the coming year is that IB is, is allowing some more flexibility so that now MYP students will only be required to take six IB subjects. So the reason this is exciting for us is because now this opens up uh, the possibility for students to continue with their athletic pursuits at the home school and also their fine arts pursuits. So it is now much more possible for students who come in as freshmen to be a soccer player and also be in the orchestra or to be a swimmer and also be in volleyball. And so that, I think, is opening a lot of opportunities for students. So along with these six courses uh, that they are required to take, at the highest challenge level for ninth and 10th graders, which, by the way, is, uh, earns the same weight uh, as any pre-AP course would earn. Uh, they will also be expected to take, uh, undertake community service, as well as this research project that will start in their freshman year and then be completed in their sophomore year. So, why IB? Uh, I think that typically, when I ask students why they're interested in coming to the IB program, one of the first things they say is that they really want to get into a good college. And so I know that uh, previous presenters have been talking about the fact that our focus really is on college preparation. And so with that in mind, I would say that I, I, I would have to say that students who go through the IB program are extremely prepared for university life. Every year when our students graduate and start college, a lot of them will begin practically a sophomore because of the credit hours that they earn through their diploma program. In the state of Texas, a student who earns an IB diploma and who's going to a public Texas university will have at least 24 credit hours already taken care of. And so along with that, students often say that they are extremely ready, they're prepared for the type of work that they're asked to do in their first year of college. So that a five, a five page essay is not a big deal because it's something that they've done before. So if your child uh, or you are looking for an environment that is going to definitely offer college readiness, if you're looking for a school that is a little smaller, we only have 320 students between grades nine and 12, uh, if your child is looking for something challenging but also a meaningful education, uh, then perhaps this is something that you would consider. So I will be available at the end if anyone has any questions about the program, but I do want to say that we have one more meeting to give you more specific information about the IB program only, and that is going to be Saturday here at Lamar Academy in the cafeteria at 10 a.m. if you're interested. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sarabando. They, they do have a wonderful program here, and I'm so happy that they have a little bit more flexibility now with those credit hours, because you know, with, with some of our students, that has been, you know, that, that may be the difference between them participating because they're very attached to some of the extracurricular things that they do, so they'll have greater flexibility, and we're happy about that. You know, I wanna take this opportunity to thank all of you, you know, for, for bearing with us in a long presentation tonight and compliment you because the, the, the fact that you're here with your, in, in, in many cases, with your child and uh, shows the level of support that you have. And that is critical. You know, this is, this is something that if they're gonna be successful in any of these programs of rigor, they need that continued parental support. Thank you so much. And um, please feel free to call any of the contacts in there if you have additional questions at a later time. 
We appreciate your attendance tonight. Yeah.